your body, especially your face. Take deep breaths and relax for a moment before returning. Before exiting the bathroom, kindly wash your hands thoroughly for 20 seconds while adhering to the correct hand washing protocols. Be reminded to sanitize your hands upon re-entry into the sanctuary. Avoid touching surfaces. Do not share hymn books, Bibles, or materials of any kind. Do not shake hands or hug anyone. You may extend your hand in greeting but refrain from touching. We know that the Lord is indeed calling you, but we can assure you not on your cell phone. So kindly select the silent or vibrate mode. We now invite you to remain reflective as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Pleasant and hearty welcome to the Ebenezer Moravian Church, located in Mansion Village on the island of St. Kitts in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. This welcome is extended to all, including those of us who are here in the sanctuary, those of us who are on the various online platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, and on Zoom. And those who may be listening this afternoon on ZIZ Radio. I invite us now to stand for the call to worship. All stand, please. It is good to give thanks to you, O Lord, and to sing praises to your holy name. We come to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. With our hands, our voices, tambourine, keyboard, drums, we come to declare praises unto you, Lord. Through your works, Lord, you have made us glad. As a result, we glorify your name. Hallelujah. Please remain standing as we sing. Our opening hymn of praise it's number one is number thirty eight in the Caribbean Moravian praise immortal, invisible, God only wise. That happens to be my favorite hymn of all time. Immortal, invisible, God only wise.
immortal, invisible God, only wise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. With our hands, we now proceed to recite or pray, in, in, indeed pray, a litany for fathers. For fathers everywhere who have given us life and love that we may show them respect and love. Father God, we give you thanks today for early fathers. We honor them as they have honored you. Hear this prayer for our fathers. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. Father of our fathers, hear our prayer for fathers that mourn. For men who, though not biological fathers, but have acted like fathers and have nurtured and cared for us. Father of our fathers, we thank you for those men who are father figures in our lives. For stepfathers, who have assumed that role with love and joy, who have loved the children of another as their own and created a new family. Father of our fathers, hear this prayer for stepfathers. For adoptive fathers, who have claimed the orphan and loved the once unwanted as a precious gift from God. Father of our fathers, we give you thanks for those fathers who extend beyond their immediate boundaries. For fathers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to the needs of their children and have not sustained their families. Father of our fathers, we lift up absent and fathers, and we pray that you will have mercy on them. We pray that they will learn to depend on you, that they may be able to provide and care for their families. For fathers who struggle with temptation, violence or addiction, for those who do harm and for those whom they have harmed. Father of our fathers, have mercy on fathers that struggle. For new fathers, full of hope. For long-time fathers, full of wisdom. For the fathers yet to be and the fathers even soon to be. Father of our fathers, hear our prayer for the fathers of this church and within our communities. For those that have shaped our lives without claim of family or kinship. For those who have taught us, guided us, shaped us, and molded us into servants of Christ our Lord. Father of our fathers, hear our prayer for the fathers of our faith. I would now like to ask all men, fathers or not, to stand please. All men, fathers or not, please stand. God our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. As we now, and now we all stand as we sing hymn number 394, Faith of Our Fathers. Hymn 394 in our Caribbean Moravian prayer, Faith of Our Fathers.
Dead. A prayer for fathers. Parent God, we give you thanks for earthly fathers. We praise your name that we have them as guides. We give you thanks for all the fathers who continue to walk in your path and to allow your word to be a guide to them. God in heaven, it is not an easy task to be a father. We know that you have first-hand experience in, of the pain of your children or the pain that your children can cause you. We know as difficult as the task may be, we know and cling to the same promise you made to Joshua, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And though the road may be rough and uncertain, we will stand as good role models, Heavenly Father, for our families. Because one thing we are certain of is that your guiding hand will always be there to lead us. We pray your forgiveness where we have fallen short, O oh God, and we pray for your spirit of strength to help us in our time of weakness. Father God, we pray for your spirit of patience in our time of impatience. We pray for your spirit of love to rule over us at all times, God. These and all other mercies we pray and ask for in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Savior. Amen. We will have a choral, a choral response. Father in God, and this will be to the tune of Kumbaya. Father, God in heaven. Father, God in heaven. Our choral response.
can hear our prayer. A God who can hear our prayer is indeed a good, 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 good. I don't even want to stop. A good, good God. And so I'm sure that we would not feel good if we don't sing about the goodness of God. What do you say? Amen. 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 Yeah. We sing about the goodness of God. Hallelujah.
goodness of God. Hallelujah. All those who can talk, talk of, it. talk of the goodness of God. Right. And for those younger ones of you who can rap, That's rap it. of the goodness of God. Right. Trust me. Whatever communication mode that you have, you can use it to proclaim the goodness of God. Please be seated. I want to say a very big welcome once again to all who are sharing in our worship experience for today. For those of you who, who joined us late, I re repeat, I say again, that we are coming to you from the Ebenezer Moravian Church right here in Mansion Village on St. Kitts. The, uh, in the state of St. Kitts and Nevis. And all are welcome. Those who are here in the sanctuary, those who are on the various online platforms, Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, and those who will be listening to us this afternoon on ZIZ Radio, we welcome you all. If you are curious and you have come to see, if you are weary, and you come to find rest. If you are grateful and have come to give thanks, if you're hurting and have come for solace, if you're listening and have come to pray, welcome, welcome, welcome. As we say, there are no visitors in God's house, only family members we have not yet met. If this is your first time watching me thus, if, if this is your first time worshiping with us, welcome home. We are always glad to meet new members of God's family. Every time. Now, if you are seeking a church home, we invite you, of course, to make Ebenezer your place of worship. We also want to ask if there's anyone in the sanctuary who is visiting us for the first time or who is with us for the first time in a long time. Can you please stand and be recognized? Anyone who is visiting us for the first time or if you, have, or if you are with us for the first time in a long time, please stand. And we will seek to have a microphone come to you so that you can let the whole world know who you are and where you are coming from Welcome, welcome. We have two more. Not nice. Our place. Well, all right. You know what that applause means, right? That applause means that we appreciate you and we welcome you. All right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus for bringing new members of our family. Hello. Let's welcome them again. We want to take a moment. We want to take a moment to say congratulations and God's richest blessings to all those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries or any other milestone. First of all, let's take birthdays. Anyone celebrating birthday this week or in the upcoming week? In the upcoming week or even if you were not here last week and you celebrated last week, please stand. Birthday celebrants, please stand. And a microphone will also be coming your way. Ah. Yes, there we go. And who are we speaking to? Sister Addis Bell. Yes. And what's your name? Uh, say your name again, please. Treasure Cannonier. Treasure Cannonier. Any other birthdays? So let us sing the birthday song for the celebrants. Birthday celebrants, please keep standing.
I just want to also recognize a birthday celebrant who goes by the name of Charlize Huggins. This was on the 12th of June, but we were not able to observe that last week. And so we want to take a moment now to acknowledge that birthday today. Charlize Huggins, I think she is listening or viewing by Zoom this morning. So let's go with the happy birthday song once again. Happy birthday. This really be the best birthday that you've had. Any anniversaries? Any anniversaries this week? Any anniversaries in the days surrounding today, the 19th? A few days before, a few days after, any anniversaries? No anniversaries. And so we would ask the birthday celebrants to stand again. And uh, Charlize Huggins, wherever you are in Zoom land, please stand. As we, as we ask God's blessing on you. Okay, we are going to get the, our pastor to pray for the birthday celebrants. Thank you, Pastor. That's the Reverend Adlin Umganella. I want us to take a moment to observe. I want us to take a moment to observe some notices that should be of importance and should be of use to us um, at Ebenezer and for all of those who associate with us and take part in our activities. Um, Sunday school, of course, follows this service. That's our first notice, Sunday school following this service. Tuesday, Tuesday is our Bible study, which we know as evening manner. And it will be at 7 p.m. and it will be by the Zoom platform. That's Tuesday, evening manner, Bible study at 7 p.m. via Zoom. 
As per usual, also we have our prayer meeting, our early morning prayer meeting on Saturday morning, next Saturday at 5 a.m. via Zoom. We want to take note that our color offering for the month of June is gray. Now, gray in this case doesn't mean old. It means the gray dollar note. So you know what that is. The color offering for the month of June is gray. We continue also to receive a walk-up offering for the building. I want to point to us that the 33rd Provincial Synod of the Eastern West Indies Province will be held from July 17th through the 22nd, 2022. And as we know, the various challenges that will be involved because it will be held in, in hybrid fashion where the island conferences will be meeting as a group and then the synod um, officers will be meeting as a group in Antigua and Zoom will be the platform. So we're asking all of us to keep our upcoming synod in our prayers. Music Sunday will be celebrated next week, Sunday, June the 26th, 2022. That's Music Sunday. And I gather that it's going to be very, very interesting because quite a lot of the songs that will be sung will in fact have been written by Moravians. And so we want to be a part of that. The martyrdom of John Huss will be celebrated this year with a day of celebration at the Kim Collins Stadium beginning at 9.30 a.m. with church service and continuing with games and sports. So at the Kim Collins Stadium beginning at 9.30 a.m. with church service and continuing with sports and games. I want to assure us and to encourage us actually to come and represent your church in worship and on the field of play as you continue to be energized by the past, evangelize in the present, and equip and empower for the future. For it is not yet over for us. It is not yet over. As they say, it is not finished. It's a work in progress. Please remember our sick and shut-ins and our members who are away at school, from time to time, we have always been reminded of who they are, but get on our knees or get in our closets and pray for our sick and shut in and also for our members away at school. At this time, we are expecting our Sunday school to come forward and present a tribute to fathers. So all those persons involved with the Sunday School presentation, please come forward at this time to make your tribute to fathers. As they come forward, I want us all to welcome them. Let's welcome them. You know, our Sunday school represents the future of our congregation. Our Sunday school represents the future of our congregation. And these young people who we are seeking to teach, who we are seeking to lead, and who we are hoping will follow us in the way of truth and in our praise and worship of Almighty God, at all times, we have to encourage them. And so as they come forward, we await with expectation because our Sunday school, as I said, represents the future of our church.
Good morning again, church. Good morning again, church. Good morning again, church. Our Sunday school children are preparing themselves excitedly. And they will be joining us in a while. But in the meantime, in the meantime, I understand that we have a video. So those responsible for the video, can you please be guided that we will now hear the video, which will be followed by the solo presentation by Vida Autumn Mitchum. So we will take the video, which will be projected on our screen, and most likely I expect that it will be also projected in a way that those on Zoom can also be able to see it. So we will take the video at this time, and then that will be followed by our soloist, Vida Autumn Mitchum. So let's welcome the video. Papa, today is your day. Enjoy your day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Dum, ba, dum, ba, dum. I'm so grateful for the gift of life. I love you so. Happy Father's Day. that and we want to thank the group Jehovah Shalom in a cappella. Papa, happy Father's Day. Would you believe that when I was two weeks younger, I could have sing like that? <laughs> it's true. Should I try? Papa, oh no. Happy Father's Day. Badum, badum, badum. <laughs> and so we know what we will do right now is to welcome our Sunday school. And then we will have the soloist after that. You see them there? I told you all this, this is the future of our church. In fact, this is the future of our nation. Welcome them again, please. Thank you.
Hello, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. One moment, please, now. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. We want to say a very special thank you to the Sunday School. And that song, for those of you who would like to take another look at that song and really imbibe the words, it's number 688 in our, in our Caribbean Moravian praise. And it is a song that I myself remember very well from way back... Um, Many, many moons ago, uh, when I was a little boy, many moons ago, I'm not going to tell you how many moons, but Jesus, friend of little children, be a friend to me, to me, Chesil. Take my hand and ever keep me close to thee. And then the last verse is one that will always resonate. It says, never leave me nor forsake me, ever be my friend. For I need thee from life's dawning, from the time I'm born, to its end. From the time I'm born until I'm dead. Jesus, friend of little children. So even when I'm an old man, I'll still be a little child in the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 And we now prepare to welcome our soloist for this morning, Vida Otto Mitchum. And so let us welcome her as she comes forward. Morning, morning.
Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Ms. Vida Otto Mitchum. Vida Otto Mitchum. At this time, we would like to have all men in the congregation, and wherever you are, standing as we sing, Rise Up, O Men of God, hymn number 296. Rise Up, O Men of God, hymn number 296. Will all men please stand? In the meantime, our ushers and their assistants will be presenting some gifts to the men in the congregation. So we will go through, we will do that song once again with the men featuring very strongly by all men singing, Rise up, rise up, rise up, say rise up. Rise up. Say rise up. Rise up. Rise up, O men of God. Rise up, O men of God, have done with lesser things. Give heart and soul and mind and strength to serve the King of Kings. Rise up, O Oh, 
let us let us sing let us sing that last verse again please let us sing that last verse verse 4 lift high the cross of Christ tread where his feet have trod as brothers of the son of man rise up O men of God verse 4 once again lift high the cross of Christ tread where his feet have trod as brothers of the Son of Man, rise up, O men of God. Hallelujah. See how we did. See how we did. A man, how we be. A man, how we be? Yes. See how we do? Rise up, O men of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Me arm. I tell you, I'm going to listen on the radio this afternoon because I want to hear it on the radio too. Now, it is better to give than to receive, always. It was always so. It's still so. And it will forever be so. Amen. Better to give than to receive. And this is the moment where we take, where we pause and concentrate on giving. But I want us to look at our offertory sentence for today. And it should be projected on your screen. The offertory, the offertory sentence. And say with me, God's Spirit equips Jesus' followers to bring healing and hope to the world God loves. The gifts we offer God are tangible signs of that healing and hope at work in us and through us for the sake of Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as we present our tithes and our offerings, and our special gifts, the building fund, remember the walk-up offering too. Our senior choir will render a selection for us. Let us welcome our senior choir.
Thank you, thank you, Senior Choir. Much appreciated, Senior Choir. Grace, Grace. Beautiful rendition by our Senior Choir. As we prepare to acknowledge our offerings, I just want to say a very special word to those persons who are viewing on Zoom at this time. Every Sunday, as we present our gifts and offerings, I seek to send you the link, the Zoom link that you can, not the Zoom link, the, the JAD link that you can use to pay your tithes and offerings online. And so right now, I'm going to send the link to you. Look for it on your screen that you can use that link to pay your tithes and offerings online. There it is. I've sent it. And now we acknowledge the gifts that have been presented to the service of our living God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, those of us who feel like we're so good and lucky to have the jobs that we have so that we could earn money, and those of us who feel like because we got our parents to give us this and somebody to give us that, that we have money and who feel good. Father God, we pray, O oh God, at this time that we recognize that it is you. That everything comes from you initially. That wherever it comes from in this world, it comes from you. But the beauty of this relationship is that we're supposed to sow back into the kingdom. And so we come at this time, O oh God, to, 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 to sow back into the kingdom, presenting our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings to continue your good work here on earth. Because the work of the church is a great work. It requires lots of resources. And so each and every one of us, O oh God, who claim to be your children and who are honored, who are privileged to be called your children. We want to sow back into that kingdom. And so at this time, O oh God, we present our tithes and offerings to you in the hope that you will bless it and multiply it for your work. And that everything that it is put to will be to your honor and to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks. Thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed. My soul is at rest. Oh.
That's true. That's true. That's true. Thank, thank you, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Rev. And one thing we have to always remember, that it is God money, you know. Everything that is there is God won. He only passing through our hands. But the way how the kingdom works is that we're supposed to put something back into the, we're supposed to channel it back into the work of the church. That is how it works. So it belongs to God, really, eh? You just pass into your hand. The question is, how much of what passed through your hand are you going to channel back into the church? That is the question. And so it's very important for the continuation of the good work, particularly for us here at Ebenezer. This sanctuary has been here for 115 years. 115 years. 115 years. Older than anybody here right now. Most certainly. So, heed the word of the pastor and come up with your creative ways of raising the funds so that we can restore the sanctuary to the place that we would like it to be so that when we come to worship, we can say with confidence, let us worship in the beauty of holiness or the holiness of beauty. Amen? Our opportunity now for hearing the word of God, both in the written word and the spoken word. This is one of the hallmarks of our worship. Hearing the, the word, the written and the spoken word. And the written word today, the Hebrew reading is coming from Isaiah chapter 65, reading from verses 1 through 9. And will be read to us by Brother Steve Charles. Brother Steve Charles will be reading the Hebrew reading from Isaiah chapter 65, verses 1 through 9. And following him, the gospel reading will be read by Brother Myron Williams and will come from Luke chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. Gospel reading, Luke chapter 8, verses 26 to 39 by Brother Myron Williams. First, let's hear from Brother Steve Charles with the Hebrew reading. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 1 through 9. Good morning. The scripture reading is taken from Isaiah 65, verse 1 to 9. My name is Steve. Thanks for having me do this today. Isaiah 65, verse 1 to 9. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walk it in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. A people that provoked me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificed in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments which eat swine's flesh and brought of abominable things, as in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself. Come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense, into their bosoms. 
your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, said the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills. Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. Thus said the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one said, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servants' sakes, that I may not destroy them all. Verse 9, the last verse. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains. And mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. Thus ends the scripture reading for today. May God bless you. May God continue to shine his face upon you and give you every blessing that you ask for. Thanks again. Thanks be to God. Yes, good morning, church. As today's part is, they'll be reading from the good news for modern man. So you may follow in your Bibles, Acts chapter 8. I'll be reading from verses 26 down to 39. Here begin at the reading, Jesus and his disciples sail over to a territory of Gersha, which is across the lake from Galilee. And Jesus stepped ashore. He was met by a man from the town who had demons in him. For a long time, this man had gone without clothes and would not stay at home but spent his time in the burial caves. When Jesus saw, when he saw Jesus, he gave a loud cry, threw himself down at his feet, and shouted, Jesus, Son of the Most High God, what do you want with me? I beg you, don't punish me. He said this because Jesus had ordered the evil spirit to go out of him. Many times it had seized him, and even though he was kept a prisoner, his hands and feet tied with chains, he would break the chains and be driven by the demons out into the desert. Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Mob, he answered, because many demons had gone into him. The demons begged Jesus not to send them into the abyss. There was a large herd of pigs nearby, feeding on a hillside. So the demon begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he let them. They went out of the man and into the pigs. The whole herd rushed down the side of the cliff into the lake and was drowned. The men who had been, who been taking care of the pigs saw what happened. So they ran off and, the, and spread the news in the towns and among the farms. People went out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were all afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how, how the man had been cured. Then all the people from the territory asked Jesus to go away because they were terribly afraid. So Jesus got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged Jesus, let me go with you. But Jesus sent him away saying, go back home 
and tell what God has done for you. The man went through the town telling what Jesus had done for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much, brothers. Steve Charles via Zoom and Myron Williams right here in the sanctuary. That was the written word. As we prepare ourselves for the spoken word, a song of preparation, he left the splendor of heaven. He left the splendor of heaven. After which, we will be hearing the written, the spoken word, I beg your pardon, after which we will be hearing the spoken word, and the next voice that you will hear will be the voice of Minister Cleon Lewis after the song of preparation. Minister Cleon Lewis will be speaking to us this morning.
isn't love. When the ocean is dry, there's no star in the sky. There's a sparrow can fly. But if that isn't love, in the kingdom of God, our heaven may be a myth. But there's no feeling like this. If that isn't love. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. And all my days I'll be held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me. You have led me through the fire. And in darkness night, you are close like no other. Glory be to God. I've known you as a father. Know you as a friend. God Almighty, I have lived in the goodness of God. Come on, lift your voice and sing all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life, oh God, you've been so good. church say hallelujah we are serving a faithful God in some time we are not faithful to him we are still serving a faithful God so we just want to give praise and we just want to give thanks 
and glory to God for he is not like man. Men will love you today, they will lift you up today, but soon as you and them fall out, they will turn their back against you in a heartbeat. Some will call you friend. Some will call you as best buddy, but let something happen between you and them. They trade down like nothing. But I'm glad we're serving a God. In spite of how many times we have failed him, how many times we have turned our backs against him. But in our situation, and in our needs, and in our circumstances, he's always an on-time God. So many times we have failed him in word, thoughts, and in deed. But nevertheless, he said he wished that none should perish, but all should come unto repentance. He's have his arms open to receive you, even though you have failed along your journey. So I just want to give honor and praise to God most of all. I also want to give honor to my wife. Raise your hands. Raise your hands, dear. Raise your hands. That's right. That's my wife. Mrs. Lewis, put your hands together for my wife. <laughs> Glory be to God. Every husband must always honor their wives. Because when you're at home going through your situation, sometimes they are the ones there for you. People don't understand that. So every chance to get to honor your wife, you must honor them. Because they should be your heartbeat. And as fathers, this is Father's Day. There can never be a father without a woman. Let me tell you that, you know, you cannot be a father without a woman. It is a... Lord, I wonder if I'm going to get myself in trouble. All right, all right. There can never be a father without a woman. And I can turn it around. There can never be a father without a man. I don't care what they say. Oh my, this scientist ain't easy, but... Nevertheless, it needs a man for there to be a father. Glory be to God. So I give honor to my wife. I give honor to the ministers, the leaders, the lay pastors, the members, the visitors from near and far to the Moravian Church. We welcome you. Put your hands together for yourself. Because some, some, sometimes it's hard to get out the men, you know. Sometimes when you look around in church, the church is always filled with women. But sometimes we wait till Father's Day and special occasion and Christmas Day for them to be in the house of the Lord. So sometimes you have to give praise and thanks for them being here. I thank God that I'm able to hear, to share the word that God has given to me on this time. Father, I give a praise, I give a thanks. Father, the songwriter said, It's not my will, but thy will be done. I pray, O oh God, may you take full control of this service. May you use me as a vessel to deliver your word today. That you may bless some heart. Those who are listening on Facebook or YouTube or Zoom, I pray, O oh God, may your words reach them, reach to their very hearts. Help them to understand that the best day or the best fathers they give they can give is themselves to you. Because you're the fathers of fathers. You're even mothers to those who have lost their mothers. I pray, oh God, may you take full control. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I say good morning, everybody. Amen. Glory be to God. When the woman of God asks me to minister, I'm the kind of guy that I always make myself available to do whatever I'm called to do. And I said, Lord, what message can I bring? What can I bring to the people? What can I say to the people? I'm, I'm a young man. What can I say to the people on this Father's Day? And the Lord said, remind them where they came from and where they are today. You children, you don't know where your father came from. You don't know how hard he had to toil that you're able to be here today well-dressed. You don't understand. I know. I've been around when they had um, 
uh, uh, those lodgings. Do you understand that when you use the lodging, those young fellas would run up to try to reach you? Nobody understand about that. Nobody understand when you have no Kool-Aid to make any drink, you have to drink sugar water. Nobody understand that. But the days of today, children want KFC and they want Burger King and they want ready fried chicken because they feel they deserve it. They feel everything in life came easy. But they don't understand what your parents or your father had to go through to be able to provide for you. So remind them where they came from. Glory be to God. My text is taken from Luke chapter 5. This is a well-known passage, Luke 5, I mean Luke 15, sorry. My message is speaking about a son. Luke 15, 11. And this Jesus is telling the story. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father... Give me the portion of good that falleth to me. And he divided them his living. And not many days after, the young son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there he wasted all his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all he had, then arose a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into the field to feed swines. And he would faint and have fallen and full in his belly with the hocks of the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. Glory be to God. Sometime in life as children. Sometime you will tell your parents you want what belongs to you. Without understanding the real purpose of having. This young man said to his father, Father give me my inheritance. Give me what belongs to me. Just like any one of us, he want to enjoy life. He may have been tired working with his fathers in the field. He may have been tired waiting on his brother, waiting maybe on his sister. He may have been tired and he wants to enjoy life. And just like fathers, he gave to himself. He gave to his son. And he went out in a country. And after he had spent all he had... Perhaps he made friends because I realize even in saying kids when you have money... They tend to have people who would follow you, people who would joke close to you, to, to take from you. People who call themselves friends, people who say they're there for you, through the thick and thin. But when you end up in a situation when you're in want, the same people you thought would have been there for you, the same people you help, you thought they would have been there for you, they turn their back on you. Some of them you may have helped pay their rent, some you may have paid the electricity bill. But when you fall yourself in a situation, they're not there to help you. This young man gathered all he had. He went into a far country. He spent all he had. He limed. The Bible says he lived a loose life. May he, maybe he told himself, I'm enjoying it. I'm living it now. Just like young people, I am living in the moment. I am enjoying it now. Life is now. I am enjoying every minute of life. But do you understand there's a cost to everything you do? He spent all he had. And a great famine hit the land. And he was in need. He was in want. And the only thing he could do is try to seek a job. And look at the job that he received, feeding swine. But the Bible says while he was there feeding the swine, he was hungry. And when I tried to analyze it and look at it, how a young man 
could, could, could reach such a state that he can look at the pig hocks or the pig food and, and, and develop that strength that he is able to eat it. The Bible says he's filled his belly. The Bible didn't say he take a taste. The Bible says he filled his belly. But in spite of all that, in spite when you're going through your tribulation and you're going through your trials, always remember your father. And the Bible says he came to his senses. He said, my fathers have hired servants. I will go back to my father. And ask for forgiveness. How many of us after we have turned our backs on God. When we are in the hospital and when we are sick. We want God more than any, any time before. When we have to go to a surgery sometime. We are there on the operating table. We are crying to God. God we need you more than any before. When your family is in a situation or circumstances, when you're in pain, when you're in trial, you need God like never before. But when God brings you out, some of us don't even say thanks. We don't even say thank you, God. The goodness of God. All my life, you have been faithful. We don't often tell God, thank you for what you have done. But when we're enjoying the good times, we don't remember God. But when we're going through the mess and the trials and the pain and the persecution, we want to remember God. But this young man, the Bible said, and when he came to his senses, he said, how many hired servants my father have? They have bread enough even to spare. And I must perish with hungry. He said, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Glory be to God. So many of us don't have the chance to cry out to God to ask for forgiveness. Because death have no respect of persons. When you're living your life, there's a song said, today you're here, tomorrow you're gone. But I like the past said, this minute you're here, this minute you're gone. Sometimes you don't have the opportunity to cry out to ask God for forgiveness. But I thank God for grace. Grace is undeserved favor. We don't deserve it, Lord. We don't, we, the Bible says our righteousness is a filthy rags. But because he loved us so much, he looked beyond our faults. And he saw our needs. Glory be to God. And he rose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Glory be to God. Sometime I try to analyze that. Have to be the father may have been walking through the window day after day. Hoping that his son will come home. You don't understand when your child is out there in the world. Sometimes you pray. Sometimes you just want to come back. You just want them to come back to their senses. They don't understand. They want to live their loose life because their friends are doing it. They want to wear the naked clothes because their friends are doing it. They want to go to music festival. They want to go to everything. They want to enjoy their life because their friends are doing it. Do they understand that their parents sometimes are home? Kneeling down and praying to God. Protect them. Protect them while they're out there. Protect them, Lord. They don't understand. I have what the, um, Facebook, I have seen crimes. Young girls being kidnapped. Young girls going to slavery. Not only young boys, young girls, young boys. They're going to slavery. They're sell as prostitutes. They're being used and abused. The last thing I saw yesterday, an eight-year-old girl, she left her grandmother's house and in the space of eight minutes, she was kidnapped. She was abused and she was killed and thrown into a river. Do you understand the world that we're living in? The Bible says men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. We're living in a time where men are being wicked. They're killing left, right, and center. They have no remorse. 
They don't think that, that, that there is a God. They feel like life belongs to them. But it's the mercy of God that is keeping us thus far. Glory be to God. Think of the war in Ukraine. I spoke of this already. When I watch the videos, I see mothers holding on to their dead children. I see fathers holding on to their dead children. Husbands holding on to their wife. They're pleading and they're begging and they're crying to the government. Stop the war. We don't need no more war. We're losing life. We're suffering. Stop the wars. But yet they're fighting a useless battle. But we're here in saying because we're watching the news and we're looking at it. But because it's not us, because we're here under the shelter of God, we feel life is dandy for us. But out there, they're weeping and they're wailing and there's gnashing of teeth. I see army men kiss their wives. I'm going to fight battle. I'm not sure I'm going to see you tomorrow. I'm not sure I'm going to see you again. And they left for war and the next time they returned was in a body bag. You don't understand what is going on in the world today. It's the grace of God that is keeping us today. It is the grace of God that is keeping us a long life way. Remind the people where they came from. And where they could have been. It takes me back to the song that says, Roll back the curtains of memories now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Remember, the Bible says, remember, I'm human and we are human when we often forget. But the writer says, remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Glory be to God. All of us need a reminder. We need a reminder where God has brought us from. Some of us had no food in our cupboards. Some of us, electricity was cut off. Yes, I can say that again. Some of us had no water. Some of us children was there hungry. But God bless somebody to reach out to you. Lord God, I understand he's an on-time God. He may not come when you want him to, you know. He may not come when you're going through directly in your situation. But when you have no more strength and you fall down on your knees, Lord God Almighty. Lord, you don't understand when you're on your knees. The greatest strength a believer can have is when they're on their knees. Because that's when they have the attention of God. And God will always come through for you. You need to understand that God is a loving God. The Bible says he left the splendor of heaven knowing that his destiny was a lowly hill and Golgotha where he suffered and died for me. You, do you understand that? How many of us would took on the task, take on the task and said, I am willing to go and give my life for such a wretched people. Such a people who don't deserve it. Such a people who live in so loose and so slack. They have no remorse. But the Bible said he left his splendor. Went on the cross. And he did it just for you. And for me. And the writer said, if that isn't love. For a man to lay down his life. For a people who don't deserve it. If that isn't love, the ocean. You understand for him to say the ocean is dried. He even said that there's no star in the sky for such a sacrifice. There's no sparrow can fly. If that isn't love, then the kingdom of God might, might as well be a myth. There's no feeling like this. If that isn't love, glory be to God. He did it for you. And he did it for me. And so the prodigal son, the Bible says his father saw him afar off. The Bible says he fell on his neck and he kissed him and he said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Glory be to God. And just as a good father, the father said, but the father said to his servant, bring forth the best robe. Put it on him. 
put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Glory be to God. I know for a man who came from a place of wealth, he had to have shoes on his feet. Glory be to God. For a man who came from a place of wealth, he had to have clothes on his back. But because he wasted his substance, I could show he maybe have, maybe gamble off his shoes, who knows? Maybe gamble off his clothes. So he returned naked. Glory be to God. But as a loving father, he didn't look for any ordinary robe. Glory be to God. He said, look for the best robe. It's not that the father is proud of what the son have done. It's not that the father is endorsing what the son have done. But because the father recognized, this is my son. He once was lost, but I'm glad, I'm happy that he's found. Just like God, when God looked to us, he is not pleased with how we are living our life. He is not pleased with how we talk and how we walk and how we act. Even to those who we call our fr friends and neighbor. Some people are there to bring you down. Say all manner of evil against you. But God, in spite of it, God is able to dare to see you through. I'm telling you, I have seen in ministries, I've seen in church. Worship leader fighting against this sister, sister fighting against this brother, brother fighting against this sister, ministers fighting against this minister because of position. You don't understand. The position that you have is not yours. It is God who has given it to you. God gave you your gift. God has given you your talent. There's nothing you can do without the grace of God over your life. It's that isn't love. The love of a father. He looked for the best robe and he covered him son. He looked for a ring. This is no ordinary ring. He put a ring on his son. Even the Bible said, glory be God, when one soul turned to God, the angels in heaven rejoice. One soul, the angels rejoice. A son, a daughter have been lost, but now they are found. Let's be mindful where we came from. Anytime you feel like you want to give up on God, remember where you came from. Remember, you were sick. You were shut in. But because of the mercy of God, you restored healing. You got healing. You were strengthened and now you're on your way. Let us give thanks. To God for all that he has done. Lord God. And the Bible said. The, uh, the, 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 and he bring the fatted calf. And kill it. And he said let us eat. And be merry. For this my son was dead. And he's alive today. He was lost. And he's found. And they began to rejoice. Glory be to God. Rejoice. I be exceedingly glad for great is your reward which is in heaven. Your reward is not of men. If you're waiting for men to reward you, you will never have it. You may not even have it. Because sometimes you do good and you're waiting for somebody to say, well done or thank you. And sometimes you don't even get it. Sometimes you help somebody and you expect them to come back and say thanks. Sometimes you don't even get a thanks. That is the life we're living in. You do good to people that don't even look back to you. Show no gratitude, no sort of compassion. But I'm glad that God is not like that. Our reward is not of men indeed, but is of God. Glory be to God. So we give him praise and we give him thanks. Because soon and very soon we'll be in a mansion. <laughs> Lord God, a beautiful mansion walking on that street of gold. Yes, yes, yes. Our earthly days, our earthly days may have been one of sorrow, one of pain. One of trials, one of tribulation. But we endured as a good soldier. 
God is not looking for no weaky, shimmy, shimmy, pam, pam, pam kind of people. Let me tell you that. You can't be serving God and when an obstacle comes your way, you just pack up and you're gone. Those are some of the reasons why people leave church. A little incident happened, happened they just pack up and gone. And they go to a next church and they feel the next church is the answer. And you go in the next church, it is the same thing and they pack up and they're gone. And they go into a next church and the same thing. They're running from church to church, not recognizing. It is God will fight your battles for you. Psalms 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Surely he is my refuge and he is my fortress. Psalms 27 said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked come up against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes. They stumble and fell. And not because of your strength. Not because of your good looks. Because your good looks can't buy your way into heaven. You know, I don't care what dress you wear. I don't care how round and nice your face or your cheeks may be. It cannot buy its way into heaven. It is your heart, your relationship with God. I don't care how beautiful your shoes is. I don't care how high your heels may be. Some people have some three inch heels. Some people have some four inch heels. I don't care how high your heels are. That kind of buy your way into heaven. I don't care the kind of hairstyle you might have. Some of you have all kind of fancy hairstyle. Wrap here, twist here, curl here. All kind of way. But it cannot buy your way into heaven. I don't care the color of your lipstick. Some people have all kind of expensive lips. I don't care about your Victoria's Secret. It cannot buy your way into heaven. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Your Victoria's Secret will remain a secret. Because it will not buy your way into heaven. Glory be to God. It's your relationship with God. Your heart. People draw near unto God with their mouths, their lips. But the Bible said their hearts are far from him. They can talk, they talk, they can walk, they walk. But their heart, the condition of their hearts. Your hearts. How you live your life. And every day I give thanks. Yes, you my wife, I give thanks to God for you. Nobody understand. When you go to trials and you go to pain, sometimes God sends somebody just in time. Just in time. When you have given up on love, love may have failed you many times. That man failed you. He called himself a man. And now you call him something less than a man. You put your heart into that man. You put your heart into that woman. And they fail you. Sometimes you tell yourself, Lord, I'm fed up. I'm done with him. I'm done. I ain't want no more man. I ain't want no more. I'm done. I'm fed up. Lord, glory be to God. How many of us had said that? How many of us had said that? Lord God Almighty. Everybody wake up now. Mm. Yeah. But when God send the right person, immediately she get your attention. Lord God Almighty. Yes, a Lord, I, I said I don't, but Lord, I don't know something about her. Something, she is unique. You don't even know the woman yet, you know, but she is unique. Something about, you don't know the man, but he's unique. Lord, he's handsome. Lord God Almighty. When God send the person at the right time, there is a connection. Because you're not just going by sight. There is a connection, a connection of hearts. How you know when somebody loves you? Get to know their hearts, not their face. Their faces are easy to fool you. I ain't gonna go back to the women them. Because they know how to dress their faces. Glory be to God. But deal with their hearts. Amen, church. Lord God Almighty. Get to know their hearts. The Bible said he killed the fattest calf. 
Glory be to God. And this my son was dead and is alive and he was lost and found. And they began to be merry. No, his elder son was in the field. And he came and drew near to the house and he heard music and dancing, rejoicing. He was working hard. Glory be to God. And he called one the servant, asking, what is this thing? What is going on? What is happening? And he said unto him, thy brother is come. Thy father, by the servant like to talk, you know. But the father killed the fatted calf because he have received him safe and sound. Glory be to God. Sometimes some people feel like you don't deserve the grace of God. Some people remember where you come from. When God already threw your past in the sea of forgetfulness. Some people are going digging up your past. Who is she? I know, I know where she came from. I know her family. I know, I know her background. Who, is, who she thinks she be? Glory be to God. This brother said he had wasted all his substance. He come back like a dog. The father no killing the fatted calf. The fat, we going to kill a little small, little bony, little... The fatted calf. Glory be to God. The Bible said he was angry. And he would not go in. Therefore came... His father out and entreated him. He said, he said, he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I have served thee. Neither transgress I at any time at thy commandment. And yet thou never gave it me, not even a little kid. Eh? You kill the fatted calf and you need to give me a little, a little, little lamb, lamb, a little, a little small lamb for myself. I never hurt you. I obey your commandments. And you, you name not give me a little lamb, but this man, do I do your kind of thing and you kill the fatted calf? How many people feel that today? They look at you. They hold your past against you. They tell yourself you're no good because I remember your mother. Your mother used what your mother got to do with you? Eh? Your mother used to this and your mother. Uh, your father used to this and your... Hmm. You don't understand when your blood wash. Do your sins may be dark as crimson. The Bible says he will make them white as snow. What can man say against you? The Bible said in Peter, First Peter, he said, You are a chosen generation. You are royal priesthood. You are peculiar people. You are a holy nation. How dare they lift up their mouth against you? Next time when people speak against you, say, I am a child of God. I am royalty. Amen. I am royalty. I am blood wash. The Bible said when I see the blood, you don't understand when you're under the blood of Jesus, there's no harm that can come up against you. Because the Bible said when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The dead angel cannot hurt you when you're under the blood of Christ. Glory be to God. Thank you very much. Lord God, I pray that when this church finishes, you will have an AC. Amen. If you want AC in here, you know what to do. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over. So if you want AC, give and God will give it unto you. But the Bible said, he answered and said to his father, These many years do I serve in need of transgress I thy commandment, yet never gave it me a kid, and that I have made merry with thy friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, and that had killed from him the fatted calf, and he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and now is found. 
Glory be to God. Rejoice. God is with you. So this message for Father's Day. This message is for children. This message is for wives. This message is for son. Always remember your father. Remember your father. Remember the sacrifice that he has given unto you. Even when you don't give anything to deserve the love of God. He made himself a vessel. Came on earth, was beaten and bruised. The Bible said a crown of thorns was placed upon his head. The Bible said blood rushed from his face. As he was walking up Calvary's hills. The Bible said he was beaten. The Bible said he was kicked. The Bible said he was spat upon. You don't deserve it. But yet he did it for you. You don't deserve it. The song said, we are blessed, we are blessed, we are blessed, we are blessed. We don't deserve it, but yes. We are blessed, and I'm closing. I remember Jesus when he was in the garden of Gethsemane. When he saw all he had to go through, he said, Father, if it is possible, remove this cup from me. But because of love, he said, never, nevertheless, it is not my will. But thy will be done. The songwriter says, It's not my will, but thy will be done. Said Jesus, Let this same prayer be mine every day. And when this whole robe of flesh that I wear make me falter, guide my step, hold my hand all the way. Glory be to God. So I give honor and praise. For God have always been a good God. Demonstrating that love for us, for you and for me. Because he love. His love is not like men. Like I said, men will lift you up today and drop you tomorrow. They will lift you up now and drop you now. For the matter of fact. As long as they hear things bad, they drop you. Hear everything good, they lift you up. That's how mankind be. You're good with them, they're good with you. You're bad with them, they're bad with you. But I got God don't think like that. Aye, aye, aye. Even when you don't give no money for the building fund. Lord God Almighty. You hold your money, no money for the building fund. Glory be to God. God still cover you and God still look for you. Glory be to God. Even though the walls may paint, may be chipping off and holes might be in the wall and the roof might be a certain condition. Lord God Almighty. Show that love. Give unto God as God has given unto you. So this Father's Day, I pray that everyone will love and respect their father. Do you know that your physical father is a representative of God in heaven? Your earthly father is a spiritual father here on earth to guide and lead you along life way. And as you look to your earthly father, Always remember your spiritual father. Though you were lost, you're now found. Because he will always be there for you. I just want to sing this last song. Before I go, there's a song said. That's a father. That is a father. Keep me dry. Amen. He left the splendor. I'm going to sing that again. He left the splendor of heaven. Organist tonight? All right. Amen. Knowing that his destiny was a lowly hill on Golgotha where he suffered and died for me. Amen. At this moment, I want to ask everyone to stand. Everyone, both fathers and mothers, everyone. Because we are joining today in faith. We are declaring today the love of God. The ocean. There's no star in the sky. But the love of God. Is unmeasurable. 
Can you raise it for me? He left the splendor of heaven. No hid destiny was a lonely hill on Golgotha where he suffered, where he suffered. Oh, oh yeah, his life for me. If that isn't love. If that is a love, the ocean, the ocean is dry. There's no star in the sky. There's no star in the sky. And the sparrow can fly. Hallelujah. If that is a love, glory be to God. And heavens are made. There's no feeling like this. There's no feeling like this. If that is a love, if that is a love, even in death. Even in death he remembered. Hallelujah. The thief hanging by his side. Glory be to God. He spoke with love and compassion. Then he took him to paradise. If that is love, if that is love, the ocean, the ocean is right. Um, the words of that message were very profound. Yes. 
were very, very profound. Yes. And I believe that we should take another moment to respond again in song with the words, the love of God is greater far. Because we heard about the parable of the, the prodigal son. And it speaks to the love of a father. But God, our Heavenly Father, His love is greater far than any tongue or pen can tell. And so we will reflect on those words as we sing them. The love of God is greater far. <laughs> 